Hi there. I picked up this Roland MC202 micro composer a little over a week ago, and I've been having a lot of fun with it in the studio. This is a monophonic analog synthesizer with one VCO that has a sub oscillator on it, an LFO, a low pass resonant filter, and an envelope. If we turn it on, you can see that we're in pitch edit mode by default. But if I go into play mode by pressing the play button, I can just simply play it like it was a regular synthesizer. If I play on the keyboard, you can see that the display shows what note I'm playing. There's a number in front of the note and the number just indicates what octave we're in. So that's 3G, an octave lower would be 2G. And you can get access to lower octaves by going to the transpose down key here. And we can get 1G and 1F. In order to get to higher octaves, you can go to transpose up and we can go up to a 6C. With norm selected, you're in the middle part of the range. In this video, I'd like to give a quick start tutorial on how to program the sequencer of the MC202. I'm going to work with an example. The example is this riff. Okay, it'll be a repeating one measure riff over and over again. I just played two measures of it. In order to teach that riff to the MC202, we're gonna to have to count the riff out this riff is in 4-4 time, and you could count it out on your fingers like this. Here's your 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a, right? So the riff goes 1 and 2 and a E and 4 and 1 and 2 and a E and 4 and. You can count it out like that. Or what you might find useful, especially with the MC202, is mapping out your riff on paper. That is, I'll make a 16-step grid like this. I like to put a little something extra at the beginning of every fourth step here so that I can see where the downbeat is supposed to be. Okay, so here you have 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a. So what I have is a representation of one full measure in 4-4 time where each step represents the full duration of a 16th note. And my riff is... starting with 3D here. So I'll put 3D here on the downbeat of one. And then it was another 3D on the end of one. And then it went to 2A on the downbeat of two and 2A, 3C. On the and of two, there's a 2A. And on the a uh of two, there's a 3C. And then we have on the E of three, there's three C, and then it goes to two A on the end of three. And then it's two A on the downbeat of four, and the two A on the end of four. In order to teach the MC202 how to play this riff, I'll be entering the notes by way of the built-in keyboard. But when it comes to a rest, as the manual suggests, I will Simply, for now, repeat whatever note came just before the rest. So I'm actually going to be tapping in the notes like this. Now, it doesn't actually matter what note you play in place of a rest because it's going to get completely silenced out when it comes down to it. Okay, I'm going to tear this out here. Okay, let's start entering this riff into the MC202. 
We want to go into pitch edit mode by pressing the edit key until the display shows that we're in pitch edit mode. And now I'm going to tap in the notes as written here. Okay, and let's check whether we've entered it as intended. Go to play mode by pressing the play key and press start. Okay, now you can do shift cycle to have the riff repeat over and over again. You can adjust the tempo of the playback by using the tempo dial here. And a nice little feature is that if you hold down the tempo button, the display shows the current tempo in beats per minute. Now we need to tell the microcomposer that some of these notes are actually 16th notes and others are actually 16th rests. As it turns out, we can't just simply tell the microcomposer to do a 16th note. We need to specify what type of 16th note it is. That is, we have to say whether it's a staccato 16th note or a legato 16th note, or a non-legato, or whether it's a tie. Well, at least for starters, let's just make all of these 16th notes staccato. Now, in order to teach this rhythm to the MC202, we need to go into step edit mode by pressing the edit key until the display shows that we're in step edit mode. Now, a useful move to do is to go shift number one, enter, just to make sure that you're on the first step of the first measure. Okay, we're now on the first step of the first measure and we need to do a 16th note staccato style. So I go 16th, staccato, and then enter. Now we are ready to edit the second step, which is supposed to be a 16th rest. So I go 16th, rest, enter. Okay and I will continue entering the rest of our riff. And when we've reached the end of the pattern, the horizontal lines should be there on the display. Now let's go to play mode to check whether the riff is showing up as intended. And yeah, that is the riff as intended. Now the MC202 has a very volatile memory. That is, if you were to turn this off, everything is gonna be erased. So it's useful to have the ability to save and load your work and originally this was intended to be done using a tape machine, but you could use something like this. Here I have a Zoom H1N digital recorder which records on the micro SD cards. I've got the line in on the Zoom connected to memory save on the MC202, and I have the line out on the Zoom connected to the memory load jack on the MC202. By the way, you wanna make sure that you're in play mode before you do any type of loading or saving process. Okay, so now I'm gonna save the data that we have so far on the zoom here. So first of all, just make sure you adjust the input level so that you can see the pilot tone. The manual suggests a very hot signal of around zero dB, but I like to keep it um, a bit lower than that. It works just fine. And you can save by holding down shift then do save and type in a number to name your program if you want to name it something. I'm gonna name it 42. And then you can press enter and start recording immediately. And as soon as it beeps, the process is done and you can stop the recorder. Okay. It's a good idea to verify that the save worked by doing shift verify, and then starting your tape, and then enter. And 
If you see the program number come up followed by a beep, then everything's okay. Okay, so apparently the saving process has worked. Whenever you're loading in or verifying a program, of course you wanna make sure that your recorder here is outputting a signal. And I just usually have it at 84, seems to work just fine. Now, let me illustrate how to load a program. I've already prepared file 41 on here to be a completely blank program. So in order to illustrate how to load the program, hold down shift and press load up here and start the tape, press enter and wait for the beep. We are now hosting a blank pattern. Indeed, if I start here, nothing's gonna happen and the screen is all dashes, it's totally blank. Let's load our program 42 back in to pick up where we left off. So I will do shift, load, start, tape, and enter. Wait for the beep. And now we have our pattern back in. Now let's work in some accents. I have in mind putting an accent here, 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 and here. Okay. So in order to do this, we need to go into step edit mode and we can do shift one enter just to make sure that we're back on the first step of the first measure. And I want to have an accent on the very first note. So I'm gonna tap the accent right now. And I should now have an accent applied to the first note. You can step back and forth through the pattern by using the step forward or backward keys. Right? Like if I press back, I can go back to the first step and check that, yeah, the accent was there. And then I can go, until I get just before the note that I want to accent, which I should be at right now. So if I tap the accent key now, that accent should be now applied to that 2A. And I'll keep going. I need to go right before the note that I want to be accented, right? I'm right in front of this 3C, so I press accent key, and then I go forward. And now another accent goes there. And I want an accent to go there. So now let's hold down shift, do one, and then enter to get right back to the start of this program. And I'm gonna step forward using the step forward key just to check manually whether I have placed my accents where I wanted them to go. So we've got Okay, and by the way, you can adjust the accent level using this knob over here. Now let's go to play mode and play the pattern back. By the way, the accent comes in two flavors. You can have the accent only adjust the VCA or you can have the accent so that it turns up the VCA and the filter. Now, you can hold down shift and press this high C sharp button that says accent there and toggle between the two choices. I like FA. And I kind of like it a little bit subtle here. Okay, now let's incorporate some portamento. I have in mind putting portamento here and here. To this end, let's go to step edit mode. And I'm going to do shift one, enter to make sure I'm at the very beginning of my pattern. 
We just need to use the step forward or back keys as needed to navigate right up to the step where the portamento starts. So that's going to be here, I think. Right here. And we can play the pattern back by getting into play mode and pressing start. All right. By the way, you can adjust the portamento time using this knob here. Let's play with this pattern a little bit more. Let's take this 16th note and make it a tie and this 16th note and also make it a tie. Okay, in order to do this, we can go into step mode. So using the step forward and step back keys, let's navigate to just before the note that we need to tie. Okay, right there actually. And just tap in 16th, tie, enter. And step forward. We need to go right here and do 16th, tie, enter. And let's play this back and see if we got what we intended there. Now, it might be useful here to turn up the sustain a bit on the envelope so that we can hear that tie a little more clearly. I kind of have second thoughts about making that 16th tie a full on tie. I'd like it to be a little bit less of a tie and gate mode is a useful way to address that. Let's go into gate mode here by hitting edit until the display shows that we're in gate mode. And if you just want to make sure you're on the very first step of the first measure, you can always do shift one and then enter. And when we're in gate mode, the display here is telling us what the gate time is for the step we're on. So right now the gate time is three and that's the gate time for a 16th staccato note. The next step, of the pattern is a 16th rest. And a rest has a gate time of zero. The gate time measures the duration of a note. Now, step time and gate time are two different things. Step time is the full duration of a step. As explained on page 14 of the MC202 manual, a whole note has a step time of 192 ticks. A half note is 96 ticks, a quarter note is 48 ticks, and so on. For example, 16 sixteenth notes equals one whole note, and 16 times 12 equals 192. Gate time refers to the actual duration of a note played. A rest is a note that is played for zero amount of time. So a rest has a gate time of zero. A staccato 16th note has a gate time of three. Step time and gate time are equal only in the case of a tie. Now, if we step forward through the pattern, we come to that note with the tie. I would like to change that gate time to 10 instead of 12, make it a little bit shorter than a full tie. So I'll type one, zero, and then enter. And now the gate time if I go back, I can show you the gate time of that note is now 10 units. And let's step forward to find the other tie. There it is. I want that gate time to also be 10. So one, zero, enter. Let's play back and listen to what the pattern sounds like now. Okay, I'm gonna take it out of cycle here. I want to add more variation into the pattern. In order to do that, I'm going to take the following approach. I'm going to make the pattern eight measures long, 
and it'll be the same measure over and over again at first, just for starters. And then I'm going to go in and change some of the notes in the sixth measure. I'll need to go to pitch edit mode and I'll hold down shift and hit copy here. The display shows me what measure it is I'm copying. I only have one measure in here, so okay, measure one. And then I'll hit enter and measure one has now been copied and if I go back to play mode and play, I will hear the pattern go for two measures. I want to do eight measures of that, so I'm going to go into pitch mode and just do that process over again until I have eight measures of the riff. Okay, now I need to go to the sixth measure and change notes so that I can get the variation in the pattern. And just to make sure that I start from the very start, I'm gonna do Shift, One, Enter. And I can jump to the beginning of the sixth measure by doing the forward measure here until I land on measure six. There we are. Okay, and I wanna change these notes here. So it's gonna go, yeah. Let's go back to play mode and listen back to check whether we have it. Okay. That's what I was going for. Now, using this Kenton desync box, I can sync the MC202 to Logic Pro X. I have channel eight on my MIDI Express 128 going into the MIDI in here. Sync out here is gonna go into the sync in here on the MC202. And we need to have the MC202 in play mode. In Logic X, in order to sync, I need to go to Preferences, MIDI, Sync, and in Project Settings, I need to have MIDI Clock coming out of port eight on my MIDI Express. And for mode, it needs to be Song SPP at Play Start and Stop SPP Continue at Cycle Jump, okay? And now the MC202 should be in sync with Logic. And you can change the tempo in Logic here if you want to. So if I wanna make the tempo 148, let's say, it's gonna go 148. Now, if I were to try to start the internal sequencer on the MC202 right now, it's not gonna play. That's because I have something plugged into the sync in port. I have to take this out in order to use the internal sequencer. Now, I have an idea to change the last measure so that it has a chromatic crawl up at the end. That is, so it goes In order to program that, I need to go into pitch edit mode and I need to navigate to right before the first note that I want to change. And it's on measure eight. So I'm gonna skip forward to measure eight using the measure forward key. And then I'm going to skip individual notes by using the step forward key here. And I'm going to stop once I get right before the first note I want to change. And now I change my note, next note change, and then the next note change. Notice that I put an extra note at the end that is not actually supposed to be part of the riff. In order to delete a note, navigate to just before the note that needs to be deleted.
Now I'm at the step right before the note that needs to be deleted. In order to delete the note, I hold down shift and press step delete. And while I'm still holding down shift, I press enter and I can let go of shift. The note has now been deleted. Let's go back into play mode and check. Alright, well I hope you found this tutorial useful. At any rate, good luck to you and your music, and thanks for watching.